This video is sponsored by Brilliant. This is a regular cheap drip coffee machine with no stainless steel body or digital display. Using it is simple. Open the lid, add your coffee grounds to the filter, fill the water reservoir, and flip the switch at the bottom. And of course, don't forget to plug it into the wall outlet. After about 30 seconds, you'll hear that familiar bubbling and gurgling sound as hot water begins to drip through the coffee grounds and into the glass pot, known as the carafe. Once the carafe has brewed enough coffee, just remove it, pour yourself a cup, and get ready to learn something new in this video. You might know this already, but coffee grounds and the coffee powder inside the instant coffee are two completely different things. I didn't know that. Coffee grounds are just roasted beans that have been grinded, and they don't dissolve in water. Only certain compounds like caffeine, acids, aromas, sugars, and some oils dissolve. Instant coffee is made by brewing a strong batch of coffee, collecting only those dissolved compounds, and then drying them into a powder that fully dissolves again. It's convenient, but the drying process loses some of the freshness and complexity of a real brew, which is why machines like this exist. The main purpose of the machine is to heat water and push it upwards so it can spray onto the coffee grounds. If you think it's just an electric kettle with a pump, you'd be mistaken. It's a bit more clever than that. Under the machine, you'll find a heating element similar to the one in a kettle, but instead of heating a big chamber, it is in contact with the aluminum tube. One end of this tube connects to the water reservoir, and the other leads to the sprayer. So the water has to travel through this tube. But where is the pump? It's actually built into the tube itself. The whole thing works as a bubble pump. When the power is switched on, the heating element heats the aluminum tube. And because only a thin layer of water is touching the hot metal, that water heats up and vaporizes very quickly. These tiny bursts of steam form bubbles, and as each bubble expands, it pushes the surrounding hot water upward as it tries to escape. This tiny ball acts as a simple one-way valve. When bubbles push the water upward, it lifts the ball and lets the water pass. But when the bubbles collapse and the water tries to fall back down, the ball drops into place and blocks the flow. After a short moment, enough pulses of hot water have been pushed upward that the whole column reaches the top and begins dripping onto the coffee grounds. You might wonder, why doesn't the water get pushed backward into the reservoir? That's because there's another one-way valve at the bottom of the tank. It only lets water flow into the heating tube, not back out. This keeps the heating tube full at all times and makes the bubble pump much more efficient. Heating and pumping aren't the heater's only job. The same heating element also warms the hot plate under the carafe. So once all the water has been pumped out, the system switches from brewing to keeping the coffee warm. The temperature is regulated by a bimetallic strip attached to the heater. If you like to learn more about the heating element and bimetallic strip, check out my previous video on electric kettles. When the strip reaches a set temperature, it bends and opens the circuit, stopping the heat. As it cools, it straightens, reconnects the circuit, and starts heating again. It is factory calibrated so the sprayer reaches proper brewing temperature, and the hot plate maintains the right warming temperature afterward. The electrical side is just as simple. Instead of wiring the heater directly to the mains, one wire passes through the power switch, and the other passes through the bimetallic thermostat. They can be placed on any wire, since they are all in series. A small thermal fuse is also installed in line. If anything overheats or short circuits, that fuse melts and permanently cuts power, preventing fires. And that reminds me, if you ever feel unsure about circuits or just want to refresh the basics, our sponsor Brilliant has an interactive course on circuits that I really like. Instead of just giving you explanations, it constantly checks if you understand what's happening and lets you play with the ideas so the concepts actually stick. I've been using Brilliant myself, and what I like most is how it helps me understand things by actually doing them. Math is especially tough for me when I can't visualize what's going on, so having these expert-designed visual explanations really helps. Learning there never feels passive. You get interactive problems that make you think, and you start to feel those concepts click in a really satisfying way. For me, it's been great for rebuilding confidence in areas I haven't touched in a long time, especially math and electrical topics. 
you already have the ability to learn this stuff, Brilliant just gives you a good place to practice and strengthen it. To learn for free on Brilliant, go to brilliant.org slash quasared, scan the QR code on screen, or click on the link in the description. Brilliant's also given our viewers 20% off an annual premium subscription, which gives you unlimited daily access to everything on Brilliant. And one last detail, when you pull the carafe out mid-brew, a small lever under the basket shuts the drip hole so coffee doesn't spill onto the base. Putting the carafe back pushes the lever up and opens the drip path again. And that's the whole mechanism, a deceptively simple machine using heat, steam, valves, and clever design to brew consistently good coffee. Before refilling your next cup, please like and subscribe.